Hi everyone, I'm Whitney Estenson, author of the Ascendant series, a young adult literature series that focuses on a supernatural group of people known as the Kindred. The Kindred have the power to control the elements, a gift that was given to them from the gods. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how I created the Kindred, focusing on a time in our history known as the Hermetic Period. The mythology of the Ascendant series and the creation of the Kindred is rooted in a time period called the Hermetic Period. The Hermetic Period took place around the first and second century. So this is a long time ago. This is right in the height of all the well-known mythologies of Greek and Roman, Egyptian, Norse mythology. It followed the teachings of a man named Hermes Trismegistus, who is someone that blurred the lines between Greek and Egyptian mythology. And it's even still up for debate to this day who exactly Hermes Trismegistus was. You can see um, a drawing here of what they believe he could have looked like. And you see some interesting symbolism next to him with the sun and the moon. And we're going to talk a little bit about exactly how those things play into who Hermes Trismegistus could have been. As I said, Hermes Trismegistus blurred the lines between the Greek gods and the Egyptian gods. During the Hermetic period, a lot of people started to call the gods and goddesses by multiple names. They would use the Greek name for who they considered to be an Egyptian god or vice versa. Hermes Trismegistus himself was also considered uh, to possibly be a god. Some people believed that he was Hermes, the Greek messenger, and others believed that he could possibly be Toph. And these two became completely compatible with each other. They were, during this time, one and the same person. Um, you would oftentimes hear Hermes also being called Hermes the Thrice Great to refer to all three of his possible beings, Hermes Trismegistus, Hermes the Messenger God, and Toth the Egyptian God. My characters in my novels, you will also hear use all of these names. You'll hear some of them call him strictly Hermes Trismegistus, others refer to him simply as Her Hermes, others only as Toth, or even a select few that call him Hermes the Thrice Great. I did this to show all of the different ways he was referred to during this time and that all of these beings who historically looked like different people could potentially be all the same person. I used Toph um, as the foundation of the kindred. He created them. And it's really important to understand who Toth was and what he was responsible for to understand how he created the kindred. Toth was the god of wisdom. He was a thinker, and that's really important for the kindred because they're not just brute warriors who fight first and think later. They're critical thinkers. They are looking for a peaceful solution. He was also the creator of astrology. That is a really important piece in the kindred as they are organized by the zodiac house that they belong to and are also gifted elemental magic based upon that zodiac house as well. And then Toth was also the god of magic. And so he combined these to create a human race that could imbue everything that he thought was important in order to keep the people safe. And that group of people was the kindred. With the creation of the kindred came very specific rules. And this is going to be kind of tricky for me to explain because I don't want to spoil things. So I'm going to kind of speak in generalities. This is something um, that Hermes Trismegistus himself created. They're called the seven hermetic principles. Now, this is kind of a bulleted list of them, and so they're obviously much more in-depth than, than this. The first one is mentalism. The universe is mental. Makes perfect sense for somebody who uh, was considered to be the god of wisdom to focus on the power of the mind. Number two the cor is correspondence, as above, so below. This one is all about balance, that things have to have opposites, that things you can't have one without the other, can't have good without evil. Um, this is also has to do with their powers that they receive. They're given great power, but with it comes great responsibility. The third one, vibration, movement is constant. The, the kindred get their powers from nature. They're gifted to them by nature. And within this series, nature is a living, breathing being that they are actually able to tap into and feel the life force of. And so this idea of it being constant and always moving and always changing is really important. Polarity is very similar to correspondence that everything exists in opposite, good and evil, light 
in dark. Rhythm, all things rise and fall. The kindred are in an, an eternal battle against the wraiths and against evil. This is not something that they're going to be able to just win one day and it's over. It will be a fight that takes forever and all things will rise and fall that sometimes there will be times of great peace and then that will go away and rise to times of great war and so on and so on. Cause and effect. Every cause has an effect and every effect has a cause. This is really important for my story because I, I make sure that my characters know that their actions have consequences and very real ones. You know, what they are doing is life and death, not just for them, but the people that they have sworn to protect. And finally, gender, the divine masculine, divine feminine. I don't go deeply into those points, but within the kindred, you know, uh, men and women are equal. There are no assumed gender, uh, gender roles within the kindred. Everybody is created and uh, treated exactly the same. And um, that's a really important hermetic principle and something that I carry throughout the people in my story as well. So one of the goddesses that played a big role in the story as well is one known as Mott, where Toth was the creator of the kindred. After that, after he imbued with them with their powers and gave them everything they needed to fight the wraiths, he's been pretty hands off. On the other hand, Mott has been kind of their their judicial system, if you will. She um, is the Egyptian goddess of judgment. It is actually her job to judge souls after they pass on to decide if they've lived a good life or not and where they need to go in the afterlife. She is the goddess of truth and she is the goddess of balance. There is a belief in Egyptian mythology that you can actually live Mat, which means to live a balanced life and to keep things the way that they are supposed to be. So um, the kindred revere Mott because it is their job to maintain balance in the earth, in the world, not only to not pull too much power from nature and from the earth itself, but also to maintain the balance of good and evil in the world and to keep the wraiths from taking over. And so they use Mott as their judgment, as their way of making sure that they are doing what they are supposed to. So she expects a lot of... Um, a lot of high work out of the kindred. And she's also swift to punish those who do not follow what she believes to be the right way. So Mott and Toth work closely with the kindred. And as I've said several times, they work um, to fight against the wraiths to keep people safe. But where did the wraiths come from? The wraiths came from a god named Set. Set is kind of the arch nemesis of Mott and Toth, that where they thrive on balance and truth and justice, Set does the opposite. He is the god of chaos. He believes in chaos and discord. He likes to really mess things up and just get people riled up and see what they can do. He is the god of the redlands of the desert. And so he's been associated with things being very barren and not a lot of nature, a lot, not a lot of natural element, which is the exact opposite of what the kindred need in order to thrive and survive. And he is also the god of lightning, which is well associated with um, storms. And storms make you think of things being very chaotic and very out of control. And so these three gods and goddesses, Toth and Mott and Set, are kind of the ones behind the scenes of everything. You know, Toth and Mott have created the kindred to protect the people from the wraiths that Set has created and to protect the humans. So they've created these groups on the earth to really to really battle it out for them. Um, I tried really hard to include real mythological stories inside of my Ascendant series because I believe that's the best way to learn about mythology. You know, I learned about mythology growing up because I heard about them in stories and then it got me interested enough to go out and do the research on, on my own and see what else there was to learn about these mythological characters. And I hope I've been able to do that for other people inside my series as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I was able to teach you something interesting about the Hermetic period and the combination of Greek and Egyptian mythology. And I hope you'll go check out the Ascendant series.